Hello. Today uh, we are going to talk about a new sensation in the world of uh, fountain pens. I call it a new sensation because the pen itself in its earlier of that is pretty well known and well established but the new variant that has come is creating a, you know kind of ripples in the world so and many people have been uh, requesting us to do a story on it because they want to see the pen with their eyes in a video before they actually go about buying it so what we have today for you is a Jinhao X159, the new sensation. I ordered it from Amazon and uh, it has just arrived. And this is, and we will be unboxing it. Uh, if uh, you can call this a box, uh, we will be unboxing it for you. So, uh, number one, this pen costs about a thousand bucks. So, as far as pens go, uh, it's not cheap unless of course you are comparing it to a mobla but then again uh, the moment you do that you get back into the same cycle because what I'm trying to say or what I'm going to try to establish is that this pen uh, it's about uh, now about time that this pen is considered independently as a pen as a standalone pen without uh, referring it constantly uh, to the Mobla 149 uh, which I kind of feel is not uh, being fair to this pen. Anyway, so this costs about a thousand bucks and uh, the, the packaging is also pretty neat in the sense that uh, you know it's a plastic barrel in which it comes. We'll get back to the plastic part later on, but uh, uh, here is the pen. Like you can see, this again looks so very like, uh, you know what, and uh, the name that cannot be taken. It's pretty lightweight in the hand because this is a resin pen as opposed to its earlier avatar which was a metal pen and uh, I had my issues about a metal pen. It just did not feel good in the hand. But this feels very good. This, this is a very uh, well weighted pen, feels good. Uh, I don't know how it will write, but we'll try that too. But uh, this is a good pen, looks good. The name, uh, it looks very neat and very elegant and it has a converter in it. So what we'll do is instead of wasting time, we will uh, ink up the pen straight away, straight away and uh, uh, put it on paper. Let's write and show you samples. Uh, we'll be showing you the samples later on, but this writes straight out of the bottle straight out of the uh, ink and it writes well, it writes well. It's a beautiful pen, writes well, uh, is fairly priced, well designed. Uh, I mean, whatever be the resemblance to whichever pen. Uh, and I think this is a very nice pen, but here I would like to make a slight diversion and say a couple of things about the background of this pen. You know, this pen uh, is, like they say, uh, is a Jin Hao. Now, Jin Hao X159. Jin Hao was started in 1988. So that's 12 years there and 22 years here. So about 34 years. In the last 34 years, they have come to a position where they are known almost all over the world. Uh, so much so that here in India, however much we hate Chinese products or however xenophobic we are, uh, 
uh, we are being forced to you know review this pen and whatever people say almost everyone has a jinao pen and almost everyone has used the jinao pen and most of the people that i have talked to uh, who are proud owners of jinao pens are uh, very happy using them the point to be noted here is that there are a solid number of lessons for the indian fountain pen industry to take from jinhao you know it's very easy to foo foo it it's very easy to denounce it it's very easy to you know make fun of the chinese but at the end of the day this is a very good product number 2 we are not able to match a similar product at a similar price point so which is our fault it's not their fault they have done it they are constantly doing it and they are constantly on a path of rediscovering themselves they are on a path of uh, bettering their products they are on a path of uh, you know growth now our brothers from the fountain pen fraternity our manufacturers have not been able to uh, keep pace so that's number 1 number 2 is we have also failed in uh, branding our products in telling our stories but that's a separate story which we will talk uh, about uh, in later episodes the main point that i want to make is it's not enough that we say that china uh, is a command economy and their pricing is all dicey and stuff like that the point is at the end of the day at this price a pen of this quality are we able to produce the answer is no we have failed let's accept it let's take this as a challenge and let's try to better ourselves so i guess uh, we'll keep it at that thank you